Welcome back friends. Uh, in this video we will look at uh, how do we configure uh, file drop automation. Um, so we'll look at the entry source for file drop. So I'll go into new and automation and select an entry source or starting source as file drop. Okay. So we saw earlier that there are two types. So we'll look at how do we configure a file drop. So you just drag it in here and then you click configure. Then you'll see these two options come up like no file name and I use a file name pattern. So no file name pattern, what it basically means is like, you know, anytime a file is dropped into a selected folder, trigger this automation. It doesn't look at like, you know, what's the file name like, right? So you have to like come in and select a, a folder from your FTP that's configured. Um, and if you select it and it's selectable, then you can go ahead and then use that. So anytime a file is dropped into the triggered automation folder here, then this particular uh, uh, file drop automation will trigger, it will, it will kick up, right? Uh, when you use a file name pattern, it basically says like, you know, okay, we are now looking for a particular pattern in the file name, right? It's, it's starting with like, let's say you want, you're always going to expect a file called uh, order details uh, and then uh, followed by a timestamp, right? So the timestamp can vary, but as long as it's, it's like order details um, and underscore or like hyphen or whatever is like comes after that, we don't care, right? So as long as you get a file every day or every hour or like frequently, uh, you always look like in a, as soon as you get a file that, that starts with uh, order details, you can trigger it. Uh, or it can be like, you know, in, if it starts with, you can use the, the keyword here called begins with. Uh, if it's like within the file name, you can use contains. And if it's ends with, then you can use ends with as well. You can also use a uh, few of the uh, you know, file name pattern strings here. Um, like, you know, if you want to like you know, use the current year, the current month, or the current day, then you can use some of these strings along with the file pattern. Okay, so if it's like order details followed by the year, the month, the date, if you want the current every day's uh, file, um, you know, to trigger this particular automation, then you can specify that as well. Okay, so that's the difference between file name and, uh, you know, uh, no file name and a use file name pattern. Now, uh, what you can see here uh, on, on this side, uh, let me just take that out, okay. So what do you see here on this right side, you will see, you will notice like, you know, when I select a no file name pattern, you will see that these two folders are having a lock symbol next to it. What it basically means is like, you know, uh, any file, uh, any file location or a, a file folder that has already been selected and associated with a, with a file drop automation, you cannot choose that again for another, um, you know, file drop setup uh, with a no file name. It pretty practically made sense, right? So, uh, like, you know, there's already, like, you know, an automation that's looking for a file drop on this folder and this folder as well. So you cannot have another uh, file automation set up saying, okay, you also go ahead and, and start watching, like, you know, if a file's getting dropped. You cannot, like, trigger two different automations from the same file drop, right? Um, so uh, technically, that's why it does not allow us to, like, you know, uh, select these two folders. But, like, if you see here, trigger automations uh, doesn't have any um, like file drop associated with it. That's why it allows me to select. If I want, I can click import as well, but it doesn't allow me to these two. And if I hover over it, it will actually tell me that the disk directory is locked uh, and another file drop automation is currently using this. Okay, and then if I come here, uh, it will show me that, you know, this is actually being used by uh, one with file name patterns. So th there's a difference between these two as well. For instance, the e-commerce directory right now, I've actually associated with uh, another automation file drop automation that does not use a file name pattern. That's why it, it actually shows that message, right? But uh, the file drops one, I've actually used it with a file name pattern um, file drop automation. So that's the different method. It tells me like, you know, what are the different file name patterns that is associated with that folder as well. So if I use a, f use a file name pattern, suddenly you will see the, the icons changed a bit, right? So what happens is like, you will see like okay, the e-commerce the e one is still locked. It means like, you know, it doesn't look at like, you know, what the file name pattern is. It doesn't care. As long as a file is dropped into the e-commerce folder, the, the current uh, associated automation is kicked off, right? Uh, but in file drops, uh, it's slightly different. It's, it's based on a file pattern, right? So it's configured saying like, uh, as long as it contains, the file contains order details or it contains bootcamp, it has two automations associated with it. So which means I can still specify a one more file drop automation uh, using a file name pattern, okay, and it could be something different. Like, you know, this time I can say uh, anything that says product, okay, it actually, uh, it'll say 
uh, begins with product okay and then I can choose that particular folder it, it does allow me to select it but if I choose a no file name it will not allow me to use that one it will only allow me if it's, it's a file name pattern so keep that in mind uh, when when you have the two different types of um, you know patterns that you need to choose like a no file name and a use file name and how do you use the different folder structure for that right now uh, in this particular case when I have an existing file name uh, pattern being used in this file drops uh, I did an interesting uh, experiment as well right uh, you can see that there's two different uh, file name patterns it's looking for one is order details the file contains order details the second one it contains boot camp so what I did is like I actually like uh, uploaded a file first one like in you know, order details and it triggered the the automation that looks for using the the order details pattern right and the second one I actually uh, uploaded an, another file uh, in the same folder and this time I said boot camp order details okay so I was trying to see if like you know if both of them could be triggered or like I was I was curious enough to see like which one would be triggered would it trigger the first automation that looks for order details or the second one that actually looks for boot camp uh, curiously like I found that, that you know it was uh, it actually triggers the bootcamp one uh, because it's actually like you know encountering that first like you know, it, it depends on how you actually name the file as well right so I, I named the file as bootcamp order details and as soon as it encountered the word bootcamp first uh, it went ahead and, and you know triggered that particular automation the order details one did not get triggered at all so that's something interesting that you might want to like you know look at when you use file name patterns and when you have uh, a same folder uh, where you, you may end up using for multiple you know file drops with you know different patterns uh, that you may you may be using for your file drop automations okay uh, one other thing here that you see down here uh, it's called queuing so by default it's disabled what that means is like you know if you have a folder for file drops and if there are multiple files being uh, dropped in and when one is actually processing when the second one comes in it actually queues right so it actually queues up like if you have like you know four or five files being actually uh, uploaded uh, one after the other sometimes it takes some time for each file to process it might take depending on the size of it right so you don't want uh, the second file coming in to interrupt the the first file that's already running so what marketing cloud does is like automation studio will actually queue it uh, and then uh, once the first one is done it will go to the next one in the queue right and then process one after the other um, then uh, if you actually disable it what happens is it actually uh, will actually stop the existing run and then it will actually start the one that just came in so if you have like a, a file that's already being processed like you know, as part of the file drop and then automation kicks off then the automation automatically stops as soon as it, 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 it sees another file that just come in and that triggers that automation okay so I don't see a uh, usual uh, scenario where you would be using like the, the disable queuing part most of the times that we use we will actually disable that as well okay uh, another thing to note is like if you're actually having uh, like let's say um, uh, automation studio is like looking at a file and it's like triggered an automation and there's an error uh, and you have like other ones in queue uh, you will actually skip the particular uh, file and then it will actually you know start processing the next one as well okay uh, there are a few uh, good uh, best practices that you need to consider when you're looking at uh, file drop automation. So I'll give a link to that specific uh, you know documentation uh, from Salesforce that you need to look at uh, and consider when you're actually trying to configure uh, file drop automations in auto in Automation Studio. Okay. Hope this was helpful. In the next video, we will look at uh, how to configure the schedule entry source. Thank you for watching.